Hi, you are watching Kolsky Drones and welcome back. Today we're going to have part 2 of the Hudson 501S including some flight footage and what it's like to fly. Hi, welcome back. So, this is part 2 of this video on the 501SS. So what my, my thoughts on this are. I love it. It flies really, really nicely. It's very smooth in the air. You can throw it about. If you put it in altitude hold mode, it holds ridiculously well in the air and it's got quite a bit of speed. It's not the fastest drone in the world, don't get me wrong. But it is good. Flight times I was getting about 12 to 14 minutes. It depends very much how you fly. If you want to hover it around, you can get longer. If you're flying it quite hard like I have been, that's the kind of flight time you're going to get. With a stock on here, the maximum I was getting is around 100 and 120 metres. With uh, an Amway polarised antenna, I was getting more like 200, and with my goggles, I was getting 200 all the time, 250. I didn't try it any further than that because I didn't need to go any further. But with goggles, certainly you can pick up better. The screen on here is easy enough to read, so I didn't find any problems looking at the screen. On a bright sunny day, obviously, you've got an issue, that's why you get this sunshade with it. But nothing to worry about at all, absolutely nothing. It does fly really, really nicely. It's a bit pricey, so I think you'll see the other stuff that I'm going to do review over the next few weeks. This is probably this is the most expensive one, just, and it's not. Is it worth the money? I'm not sure. You'll have to make your own mind upon that. People love it because it's got 5.8 gigahertz, but what you lose on having 5.8 is a lot of the smart modes you're going to see in other drones. So you can't do waypoints on this, for instance, because it doesn't have the facility. Now you can connect this up to a ground station and do it that way, but that's all getting complicated. So I'm just reviewing things on what's out of the box. So out of the box, you can't do that. But I still think this is a fantastic drone. I love the controller. The controller feels nice. The sticks feel really great because this isn't. This is more. It's still probably. Is it toy grade or hobby grade? It's probably hobby grade to be honest. The sticks feel nice. There's quite a bit of tension on them. And it feels nice in your hand. This rubberized coating on here is really, really nice. One thing I didn't tell you when I did part one was, oh yeah, I've got a screen there, but it used to come in here with a battery carrier that would hold eight AA batteries. It now doesn't. It comes with a 2S LiPo that you get with it that connects straight into the back on a JST connector. So you don't need to bother about batteries on the later one. It comes with that and it charges on the charger you get with a drone but like I say you can charge this on all hobby grade chargers so you can connect goggles up to here if you use the old style and you could have a, a cable going to your goggles and the USB port is for doing upgrades so like I say I'm a fan I think it's great you need to make your own mind up whether it's worth the price you're going to see the flight footage coming up and what the camera looks like when it's recording. This is not a DJI Spark. So you're not going to see that footage. It hasn't got a gimbal in there. It's not got any image stabilisation. But what you get with this is a bit of an all-rounder. So it's more than just a camera drone. You can actually fly it fast. It can perform really, really well. And with the goggles you can have some fun flying FPV. So, thanks very much for watching. Enjoy the part that's coming up. And as always, have a great day and get some flying done. Bye bye. So this is the footage recorded from my GoPro. So as you'll be able to see from watching the video, it is stable. Now I must point out at this point, there was a slight toilet bowling because I didn't calibrate the compass. Like I said in part one of the video, I would recommend calibrating the compass at all times. But you'll see from the video how nicely it flies and how smooth it is. And I hope you get an impression of how quick it is.
this is the image recorded directly to the SD card so as you can see the sharpness it isn't quite there it's a little bit mushy in places but there's no image stabilization on this or no gimbal and the camera is not adjustable via anything on the controller it's a fixed lens camera but as you can see it's comparable to other stuff for the money only you can decide whether this will suit your needs Thanks very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you do please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.